COVID-19 has altered our lives in more ways than we can possibly imagine, but the most significant is the way in which we professionally and instructively communicate with one another. Even though video conferencing platforms have been around for quite a while now, except for a very small fraction of people, most of us never did fully embrace the idea of having formal discourse over the internet, at least not until the pandemic changed all that. So, with the whole world forced into a position where it had very little choice but to not only welcome video conferencing with open arms, but even be dependent on it, why couldn't tech giants like Microsoft, Google, or Cisco, with the respective video conferencing extensions like Skype, Hangouts, and WebEx, leverage this situation? Instead, how did a relatively unknown company beat all competition and become a household name? In today's video, we're going to talk about the CEO of Zoom, Eric Yuan, whose estimated net worth, according to Forbes, is $13.1 billion, which is a 1200% increase in the span of just two years. Though all this might make it seem like he was an overnight success, it was not at all the case, and let's see how. If you're new to the channel, make sure to click the subscribe button for more videos like these and let us know in the comment section below if you knew about the 51 year old billionaire before today. Eric Yuan's Early Life and Education Yuan was born in Taiyuan, China to geological engineer parents. At an early age, he used to collect scrap copper to earn some pocket change. He did his bachelor's in applied mathematics at Shandong University of Science and Technology and his master's in geology engineering at China's University of Mining and Technology. It was while he was attending university that he first conceived the idea of Zoom. Since his girlfriend, who he later married and has three children with, lived in a faraway city, he had to travel 10 hours on a crowded train in order to meet her. He hated those trips and wished there was a simpler way to reach her. This lack of an easier alternative is what would later inspire him to dedicate his life towards making the lives of others easier. The Move to America In 1995, while attending a four-month training program in Japan, Yuan listened to a keynote speech given by Bill Gates. That speech, which was about the tech boom, literally changed his life forever. Realizing that the internet was the future, he decided to move to Silicon Valley as the World Wide Web hadn't become popular in China yet. But things didn't go as planned. As his English wasn't that good, his visa application form kept getting rejected. Only during his ninth attempt was he granted a visa. In fact, he says he would have tried for even the 20th or 30th time if that's what it took to pursue his dreams. Yuan's first job Eric Yuan is the perfect embodiment of the American dream. Coming to the United States with nothing but big dreams and later working extremely hard to make those dreams come true, isn't that what the American dream is all about? In 1997, as soon as he reached the USA, Yuan landed his first job straight away in spite of not being fluent in English. This was because he was very good at coding. Consequently, he became one of the founding engineers at WebEx, which was one of the first companies to specialize in video conferencing. The Cisco Takeover WebEx started growing fast and soon became one of the major players in its field. In 2007, it was acquired by Cisco for $3.2 billion and Eric Yuan was appointed as the Vice President of Engineering with the close to 800 engineers working under him. Though the company kept growing steadily, Yuan soon realized that something was not right. As part of his duties, he had taken it upon himself to chat with clients personally in order to get their feedback, but to his dismay, he found that the clients were almost never happy. Yuan recalls that one of the main reasons why WebEx was able to stay on top was because there was so little competition, and since they were on top and making good money, the higher ups didn't worry about user satisfaction. Yuan on the other hand decided to take responsibility. He started collecting, consolidating, and working on the various problems faced by customers. Soon, he came up with a bunch of solutions. He took all his findings to the persons in charge. He proposed taking a more smartphone friendly approach, among other things. But as the money was pouring in anyway, the bureaucrats decided not to bother. This left Eric Yuan with no other option than to find solutions to all those problems on his own. This is how he puts it, there was no way to fix the WebEx problem. The only way was to be the new solution. The Birth of Zoom Initially, when he started his intention of leaving WebEx to his close circle, he was mostly met with tales of caution. Everyone, including his wife, wanted him to stay at his safe job as there was too much competition and the market was too saturated. But Yuan decided to follow his purpose anyway, concluding that he didn't want to feel regret at a later age. In 2011, when he eventually left WebEx, 40 of his fellow employees accompanied him. Anyhow, he did not launch the Zoom software straight away. It would take him two more years to unveil the application to the world. Meanwhile, he and his team worked hard on doing the basics right and laying a solid foundation. 
Having studied the field closely for the past 15 years, he already possessed the technical know-how to create a video conferencing software, but he also knew that other companies wielded this advantage as well. On the other hand, the key things he knew he had to do differently in his company were as follows. Establish core values and nurture a healthy culture. The former is all about care and the latter is all about happiness. He wanted to create a culture of happiness based on care. As a CEO, he made it his task to make his employees happy. He knew that if the engineers were happy, the customers would also be happy. As for the name of the company, they didn't have one until two weeks before the actual launch. Poppy, Zippo, Zoom, and Hangtime are the four names that the employees in charge came up with and Eric Yuan chose the one that sounded the best. The rest, as they say, is history. Zoom conquers the world. Once launched, Zoom had an immediate advantage over its competitors because it had already solved many of the problems that users worldwide were having, like video and audio not being in sync, usage of large amounts of data, and the many difficulties faced by the client's IT department while installation. Within one year of its release, it had 10 million users. All of this success was due to enormous hard work and an obsessive focus on the customer. In fact, in those early years, he would even personally mail all the customers who had canceled their service. In 2019, Zoom launched its initial public offering, issuing 20 million shares at a price of $36 per share. On its initial trading day, the share prices went up 72%, making you one officially a billionaire. Actually, a number of companies delay going public as long as possible in fear of losing control over their enterprise. This is especially the case with self-made founders who have invested a lot of effort in creating a healthy culture. Few examples are Phil Knight and Elon Musk. However, Eric Yuan had no such quandary. It has always been his dream to start a company that one day would go public. The point to be noted here is that all these developments happened even before the global pandemic, by which time Eric Yuan had already become a billionaire and Zoom had got listed in the Nasdaq. The Pandemic and Beyond As the novel coronavirus swept the world, the need for video conferencing started to skyrocket. And having made itself unconsciously ready for this moment of reckoning, Zoom sprang into action. Soon, from being a B2B company, it became a B2C company. Initially, they had focused primarily on enterprise customers, most of which were universities. But during the global pandemic, taking into consideration their corporate and social responsibility, they provided Zoom free of cost to thousands of schools across 25 countries. Meanwhile, they also left the door wide open for the general public. Millions of people kept downloading the app. One of the main reasons why they could deal with such an explosion of demand was their scalable architecture. Though they had data centers all over the world, if not for public clouds and Zoom's ability to use them as extensions, they could not have dealt with the situation this effectively. The company's market cap rose from $18 billion in 2019 to $79 billion as of October 2021, while during the same time frame, Eric Yuan's net worth rose from $1 billion to $13 billion. However, this hasn't been without its fair share of problems. In particular, safety and privacy concerns have always plagued their Zoom. They soon realized that, for them to sustain their top position, they had to go an extra mile. Unlike the case with enterprise customers who had their own dedicated IT wing, during the pandemic, Yuan and his team understood that they had to play the role of IT as well in order to not develop a negative reputation. At one point, looking into security concerns became so unavoidable that they had to put all their new updates and features on hold for 90 days just so they could review their whole infrastructure for possible loopholes. In spite of these minor setbacks, Eric Yuan still has high hopes for his company. He does not bother much about the skeptics who say that the hate of Zoom will be over when the pandemic ends or when they lose their company's competitive advantage. Instead, he focuses on making Zoom even bigger. His present goal is to convert Zoom from a killer app into a platform. Will the skeptic's prophecies come true or will Eric Yuan take Zoom to greater heights? We'll have to wait and see. But whatever the case, it cannot be denied that Zoom has played a very crucial role in making life a little easier for all of us all over the world during time of disease, isolation, and grief. This wraps up today's video. What do you think of the CEO of Zoom, whose purpose in life is pursuing happiness and bringing happiness to others? Share with us your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed today's content, check out this related video to see more. Until next time, 